Hi guys, Stacy Awino here. Welcome to number one motivational channel. In this video, I wanted to talk about my weight loss journey. The reason I really wanted to share this story is because the people who've known me when I was heavier than I am right now, and I keep getting that question like, what did you do to lose the weight? For two reasons in my head, I think. <laughs> one of them could be someone could be struggling with their weight and they want to see if what I did will work for me would work for them and i think the second reason could be pure curiosity which is the human nature and that's just fine as well so um my story basically i've been um i was an overweight baby who turned into an overweight child or a teenager overweight adult i've always been overweight to be honest i never really stepped on the scale and was told okay you know what, you're at normal weight. Every time I stepped on the scale, I'd be told, you need to lose a bit more, you need to lose a bit more. And that, as a child especially, or as I was growing up, really affected my self-esteem. Considering I was already having another condition, a physical condition, which I've mentioned in another video, blunt disease. So, um, my parents did not intentionally feed me bad food. I'd say uh, most of the time when we see an overweight child we think oh you know stop feeding her or him all the junk food but sometimes genetics plays a part sometimes um, it could be a condition the child has so many other reasons other than just uh, junk food because let's be honest no parent would intentionally make their child overweight because of the struggles that come with being overweight I haven't encountered a parent like that and my parents are not like that and if we just examine ourselves most of us feed our children these things anyway this processed food from the time a child is weaned you know you're feeding them yogurt and most of these yogurts have sugar in them and you know you're feeding them um what else you carry snacks to for trips and if your child doesn't get gain weight out of that then that's good but then if there's a child who's over it and struggling and you see them eating these things, not necessarily things, think they eat those things for breakfast, dinner and supper. Anyway, that was just my story I was trying to, <laughs> to explain in a, a different way. But my parents really tried, of course, when there was a birthday or when we went out, which is, you know, kids, when you leave the house with your parents, you know, today I am having fries and that's not every day anyway, so uh my parents really tried i remember at some point my mother tried boiling food for me and steaming veggies so she'd boil the meat and steam the veggies or give me a roux salad and i really struggled through it the times i wouldn't eat at all and at some point she just decided you know what i can't starve you <laughs> you will lose weight when you lose weight but right now i will just do the best i can so i'd eat the wholesome foods that she would prepare in the house but then again, from the information that I've gathered in the past two years of treatment, the standard Kenyan diet is mostly carbohydrates, a little bit of veggies on the side. Uh, say for breakfast you'll have tea and bread, the tea has sugar, it has milk, um, bread, or even if you do sweet potatoes and uh, what is it called, endomas, that's still uh, some form of carbohydrate. It's just complex. It's healthier. It's still carbohydrate. For someone who's struggling with weight, there is still some form of carbohydrate that they're eating. For lunch, you'll probably do rice. And even if you try and do beans, that's... Uh, is it starch and carbohydrate or something like that? I'm not a nutritionist, but I just have a bit of information. And then at night, you'll do like ugali and skuma. I'm even removing meat from this equation. Even though now my diet mostly includes meat but say you do ugali and ugali again if you're trying to lose weight that is where the problem is and our portions are also kind of messed up because you find that in most homes the ugali is also be big and then you eat a bit of veggies and a bit of meat and you know so that was the standard diet in our household as it is in many households and i just steadily continued gaining weight and when I went to high school, our high school did not have a canteen. It did not have, we were not allowed to carry food from home. So it was mostly school food, but still again, it was mostly carbohydrates and starch. So we mostly had githeri, which had potatoes. Uh, that was every lunch, uh, Monday to Sunday. And then a couple of nights,
nights in the week we still have githeri again and then some nights we'd have rice or ugali when i was in high school i did not gain much weight in fact sometimes i did lose because i used to skip meals i got so tired of that githeri man i got so tired but I still did not lose a significant amount of weight to get to the point where I was told you are at normal weight for your age and height. Um, when I finished high school, that is when I gained the most weight. You see, until I finished high school at the age of 17, for 17 years I was told how heavy I was, how fat I was, how, and, and you know when, I normally tell someone, you come at me and tell me I'm fat, I'm gaining weight, I'm overweight. It does something to me because that is normally not looked at as a good thing unless someone was so unwell and they lost so much weight and you go to them and tell them oh you're gaining weight and you know then that's a good thing but in in most cases when you tell someone oh you know me no 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 you you gained a bit of weight here and there they're like oh my gosh i need to lose it that's the first thing that goes into their head i'd say for most people and for 17 years of my life i kept being told how fat i was and i never felt beautiful at all i never felt deserving i never felt like I, it was worth trying to continue losing weight or to keep off the weight so i ate i stayed at home for two years before i went to college and i'm an introvert which means I can stay in the house without leaving for anything and I stayed in the house and since I was alone if you had tea and bread for breakfast and those leftovers I'd have that bread again for lunch and then at night we'd probably have ugali rice or chapati or something like that and that was too much carbohydrate I wasn't moving much and I just kept gaining weight now here's the thing when you gain weight you never really notice it the people who pay attention to themselves so much, they notice small things. Like right now, I have a scale in the house, so whenever I gain a kilo, I'm like, oh my gosh, no. But during that time, our mirror was this big in the bathroom. Most, most households have that or none at all. So I would see myself up to here. Bear in mind, I am bottom heavy, so most of my weight comes to my hips. And my thighs so when i look at myself i'm like oh, not bad not bad and i'd leave until one day i visited my auntie and she had a full length mirror and i walked into this room and i saw myself and i almost passed out i saw i walked back and walked back in and stood there for a while and i was like who is this person because for the first time in say over a year I was seeing my full body and I couldn't believe I had gained so much weight. I couldn't believe that is how it looked like. And that is where now the eating disorders began. So I started skipping meals. When I went to college, I remember I would skip breakfast and lunch sometimes and probably eat dinner. And if I could lie to my parents that I ate before they came, then I would skip dinner as well, then breakfast and lunch the next day and probably eat dinner. And the funny thing is, um, I never really used to feel like I was um, out of energy. I think being young <laughs> and being so determined, but it didn't cause me to lose much weight anyway. Now, all this time, I was, I'd say, curvy. I was hippie. <laughs> I was uh, peer shaped but I still look good but I didn't feel good about myself because I just kept hearing about how big I was and so at some point it just didn't matter anymore after college I started two businesses that did not work out those I called my struggle years I really went through a tough time I didn't have much money to spare I didn't have much money for food so I didn't um, I, I didn't get to spend uh, so much money on junk food or anything like that maybe occasionally when I'd be able to get money but this is what I'll say about being broke as well when you don't have so much money to spend you tend to eat the wrong foods because um, especially carbohydrates are very cheap things like mandazis and chapatis if you can do black tea in the house you bought a quarter sugar or whatever then you will buy too much 
woman does is which could be five or ten or twenty shillings depending on where you're buying it and that's why there are some people who are poor or broke or um, not very financially well but still overweight because of that um, so during that time again I still struggled with my weight I didn't have much money but I didn't lose weight then my business is shut down and I went into depression I remember it was really difficult for me when I had to close down my design school and when that happened I'm an emotional eater when I'm stressed out I just want to eat the first thing that I come across or sometimes something really really calorie dense <laughs> I don't know what the psychology of that is but I'm, tr I'm trying to change that I've been, I've been working on changing that for a while so I, I would do that I, I would eat whatever I could whenever I could just to dull the pain of you know being a certain age and not being employed and my business is failing and you know all the things that I was going through um, then after that I got employed now <laughs> I got employed while still staying at my parents' house. During this time, I realized I had extra money to spare. And for the first time in my life, I could buy those things that I really wanted. Like, I could buy the sausages, I could buy a pizza, I could buy, you know, just whatever I craved, I could buy and keep in the house and eat and, you know, <laughs> and at work, you know, there's this, snack counter and there's you know like now food was affordable and available to me and being a foodie <laughs> I indulged and I gained more weight now I noticed uh, there was once I went to see a doctor and I was weighed and I was like oh my goodness I was over 100 kilos and I I, I I didn't I never expected that it scared me I started uh, as I mentioned in the previous video about my disability my leg was getting worse progressively so my weight was bearing on my leg and it was just making my mobility worse so I enrolled in the gym I tried to do juice cleanses and I, I tried to diet but then here's the thing with dieting um you eat good and bad and good and bad and then you go to the gym and work out you just need to change your lifestyle if you can that will make more of a difference than going on a seven day juice fast and after that then what you go back to eating the way you are it won't help you and that is what i did for a very long time because i didn't know what else to do i go to nutritionists that tell me to eat certain things and this is the thing also i'll say about nutritionists they do a great job and the people who actually lose weight following their programs but one program does not fit all i think the best nutritionists are the ones who maybe do a trial and error with you like let's try this program this program let me test you let me see what works for you not this worked for whoever so it must work for you as well because so many people have tried those diets and it just doesn't work just to be honest those diets did not work for me the things i was being told and the calorie restriction just did not work for me so i'd restrict my calories for a couple of hours or a day or two and then i'd binge eat which just made things worse so i don't know if this thing is still recording sorry if uh, i keep checking yeah so i ended up binge eating and i struggled with that until at some point i went to see a certain doctor i was having some chest pain now this doctor uh ended up telling me um ended up giving me some pills to restrict the fat intake in my diet now those pills did not really work for me because I wasn't consuming much fat really uh, so I continued with trying to watch what I was eating as much as I could and going to the gym at some point I ended up um, uh, let me see um, yeah so as, as I mentioned before I had the issue in my leg 
then something else came up i say having really bad acidity and then one more thing added to my list of health issues i got um i was diagnosed with with pulmonary embolism which is basically where a clot travels from some point in your body and lodges uh, somewhere in your arteries or yeah in your chest area and I almost died you guys I was in ICU I was in an ambulance twice to hospital I'm still on medication for that and at that point my doctor was just like no you cannot continue like this um, you need to lose weight so i was put on the keto diet for a while it helped a little bit but i didn't lose much so i was advised by several doctors to try weight loss surgery which is what i did and i will share more information on this in the next video because i feel like this is long enough so if you're curious about my weight loss surgery um story please watch the next video if you have struggled with your weight for very long or you have struggled with the weight at all please share in the comment section below what you've done or what you've been doing what are you trying to lose weight have you changed your lifestyle let's just have a discussion about it if you have any questions for me please ask and i'll try and respond as much as possible if you like this video please like share and subscribe and see you in the next one bye